There he is. Gilliman himself is staring on. Hello, Tabletop Life fans. This is Thomas Bird here. We're back with some Ultramarines. They are going to attack. It's been a while, but we're excited. We brought our good friend Walter over. We're going to have a grudge match. He's got his Necrons. We've got our Ultramarines. So this is Arcs of Omens. So we've got a little bit more points to play with. Let's see if we can blow some stuff up. Let's take a quick look at the list. As always, there'll be... Uh, pinned in the description so if you want to check those out or leave some comments let me know see what you like this list i uh i was kind of putting stuff in i was kind of kept being surprised more and more stuff fit so you know pretty interesting but uh, arcs of omen i've got heavy support as my my primary thing let's do the heavies first because that's where all the power is 10 hell blasters these are salt ones upgrade the sarge for master crafted so we can have three damage got a big six-man unit of heavy eradicators two multi melters two devastator squads Sergeant's going to have uh, Thunder Hammers. They're going to have one unit of Last Cannons, one unit of Grab Guns. Elites, we got three units of Vitrix Guard and a Super Apothecary. He's got the Vox. HQs, we got Primaris Chaplain, Master of Sanctity. So he's got plus one to hit, plus one to wound. We gave him a Wise Orator so we can roll his litanies on twos. I've been using Cassius for a long, long time, so I'm excited to be rolling on twos. We've got Tigarius. Got to have Tigarius. We've got 10 Intercessors. These guys still do work. They're much cheaper now. We've got the Hammer, the Salt Bolters. Two units of Infiltrators to do all the things. Of course, Gilliman himself, the Warlord. We gave him his Warlord trait. So we start with three CP still. All the CP. I don't have the Fight Last Judiciar. So hopefully Walter doesn't have any fighting things. But that's the list. Let's go see what Walter's playing on the Necron side. Hey, Tabletop Life fans, it's Walter, uh, Overlord Walter in this instance. Check out my cool Necron t-shirt. Um, I realize with Arcs of Omen that we have the opportunity to be, can be completely cheesy. Um, and uh, to uh, just absolutely own people, I decided to take the most meta list possible. Uh, and here we go. All right, that's right. Arcs of Omen, Lords of War. Three separate monoliths, three separate obelisks, Two Scarab units, a Scorpec unit at max size with a uh, Canoptic Plasma Sight, and leading the whole thing off, a Pharon um, carrying the Veil of Darkness with no Warlord trait. This is a unit of Heartbreakers and Life Takers. This army is mean, lean, well, not lean, but uh, incredibly devastating, and I'm, I'm very confident that we're going we're gonna to wipe the canvas with Thomas. Um, prepare to notch up another victory for the Tomb Worlds. All right, we are playing Secure Missing Artifacts. This is the mission where the objectives move. You want to move your objectives around, and then you score bonus points if you control the objective that your opponent picks. I have <laughs> allowed him, by my poor terrain placement, we're playing FLG terrain placement, uh, to move my objective out in the middle of nowhere, not... A place that I want to just go every turn and score three points. So mistakes were made. We have a lot of people here playing tonight in the studio. So this is the third table, which has a little bit lighter terrain, which for this game is going to be really rough. Look at all these guys. There's so many. I thought this was the first four line of light sight blocking that that would be uh, better for me to have up front. Now I'm kind of thinking I, there's so many guys. There's not a, this little ruin can't pretend to hold half of my guys. I really. They need to go first. There's really, there's nothing to be said. I have to go first. <laughs> yeah, you don't go first <laughs> this is to be the shortest battle report in history. <laughs> oh, Walter, your thoughts before with this bloodbath. We'll capture the roll to go first. All right. Um, obviously, my line of super heavies is staring down some guys with no line of sight blocking train. If I go first, he's going to have to redeploy these guys or they'll just be firing squad executed. Um, his castle here is behind two obscuring walls. That's going to be a real problem for me all game long. I don't have a good answer to that. It's the big weakness of this list, the Achilles heel, and Gulliman and his army of Meltas is ready to exploit it. This is far from a one game, but if I go first, I'll be in a, a very catbird seat position. If Thomas goes first, things could get a little dire for me. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting game. Time has come to roll to go first. I've got the yellow dice. He's got the dragon dice. It's a two! No! Five! <laughs> oh, get wrecked, Thomas. All right, we'll be back after my turn. All right, I, my, my movement is kind of limited. I, uh, 
I needed a big run on my guys. I had to roll let it re-roll on the advance. I did not get it. So no oath of moment this turn. This guy's going to be staying safe. I'm going to try to kill two of these big boys. If I get lucky, I'll have leftovers. Unfortunately, I picked the one guy that he didn't like expose for me to shoot for my seal of oath. So I'm going to have to do it the steel fashion way. Um, we got a line of sight. We can shoot through this building here because, you know, they're big. So all the devs are staying still. We got eradicators moved up, so they will have to minus to hit. They'll get the full rerolls from Gilliman, and then we'll see what we can do. We got to clear this guy right here for sure. This guy, it's going to be tough. Well, the monoliths are down. That's a test track vault. Two, two vaults? One, one vault and one... <laughs> uh, uh, AP5 and AP4 with no invulnerable saves. Um, turns out all you have to do is roll wounds and it generally is good. So two of them are dead, but that's all I could do. I have uh, think I'm relatively safe for one more turn. He'll be able to get some angles here to shoot, so we'll see what he can kill. Hopefully not with everything and uh, see if I can't do that again. Somehow I thought I was clearly safe behind my building. Not remembering, he could teleport a monolith and then bring some Scorpex with him. He hit the 9 on the reroll. Actually hit a 10. He's charging my two characters. That's not great. The monolith thankfully failed his charge against Gilliman. But this monolith made the charge around the wall. Now he's fighting them. I'm not playing Votan. Everyone just doesn't have 5 up in vulnerable saves. they got to be near the guy that gives out the powers. Things are not going well. Uh, during his shooting, he was able to pick up the Eradicators and most of a Grav Squad. Now, I do have the Warlord traits, so I'll probably heroically intervene a couple of these squads, but it's not looking fantastic. I need to try to stay alive. And I only have one CP. There's no thing I can do to stop this. Where is the Judiciar when I need them? Uh, we'll come back and see if anybody's left alive. All right. A comical end to that round of fighting. We should have rolled it on camera because it was ridiculous. He came in and fought. He split all of his attacks. He wanted to kill this chaplain. I rolled a bunch of fours. He only got one through out of like his seven saves he had to take. And I hit A feel no pain on a six. So he only took one wound. Over here, between shooting and punching, he only killed four guys on good rolling. Again, hitting like two sixes on three damage hits. Nuts. They fought back. He did minus one to wound. So I was able to kill just a little bit at a time. So he's only lost three guys. Over here, look at this monolith. He did six wounds, AP six. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not inside the invulnerable save range. I need to hit a six. I don't. Then I was like, I got six of Fiona Pains though. Let me hit some. And I did. I saved him down to the last guy. Then I was like, oh crap, I need to take him around test. Let me roll it. A six. I failed. Gilman lets me re-roll it. Oh, I rolled another six. So he still dies. A sword with the Mastercraft. And he literally can do so much. Oh, he died. Oh, it hurts. That's no good. We have Mollus all on our face. But it is go time now. Gillum is mad. It's going to take out some Mollus. Let's see what happens. All right, my heavy weapons are, are depleted, but I thought I was safe, so I didn't switch to Tactical Doctrine when I need it. I still have to bring in my Hellblaster, so I'm going to do that in a second. I, I missed that. But uh, we're going to try to take care of the business on these two guys. I am feeling maybe confident about killing that guy with one shooting face but that leaves this guy getting punched uh, i don't know about that can gilman one shot this guy we'll come back and see all right um so thomas has just fought back you'll notice i've seized the camera back uh, he's spoken a few times consecutively and i feel like i gotta have my turn um he was able to destroy my my veiled monolith here with reboot gilman charging it and just absolutely dumpstering it and he was able to tie up this one here, which is his Oath of Moment against. But with one wound left on it, it held strong through an entire Ultramarine shooting phase and kept him bottled up in this corner of the board. If you look at the board as a whole, you'll notice that Thomas's entire army is in one quarter of it. I've just been purging vermin like, like a champ. Now, he has crept in here with his bodyguards to take the center objective. Um, but I am still holding pretty on the other ones. I'm pulling ahead in primary. Uh, and I'm, I'm hopeful that this turn will see me get a lead that he can't catch up with. But on the other hand, the attrition is really turning against me. Basically, the only thing my charge got over here was Tigurius. Um, that chaplain is still alive, and he's just incredibly endlessly fast. Um, so this is just a really rough situation. I'm going to try and cut him down off this objective and hold him, hold him to four on primary for one more turn. Time will tell exactly how uh, feasible that is. 
but that one wound monolith is going to be functioning at full because of a strat. And this is my healing turn, so we're all going to get two wounds back. Um, so we're not out of this yet. Also, importantly, this obelisk that's looking through the windows remains stationary, so it will be able to fire at full power into all this stuff over here, except the stuff that I'm fighting with. All right, end of the turn on Walter's side. These guys, he split fire. He did exactly enough wounds to kill those guys in shooting. He spent his last CP to full power it, so he killed them. He did grow extra wounds, so he's up to three wounds. He shot his big gun into my Vitrix. I had a CP to keep my guy alive. Uh, then he charged him with scarabs just to tie him up. Uh, won't stop me from getting oath, but he does hold that objective. He's going to get a lot of secondary points. On this side over here, Gilman was able to consolidate in and help clean up the scarabs. He didn't have any CP left to minus one to wound, so they finally went down like jumps. That's Scorpex, not scarabs. Scorpex, that's right. They're all dead. That's all I know. Now it's my turn. I switched to tactical, so I'm not going to get all the Codex Warfare now, but I figured until he did this, that I was going to get some free scarab kills with my, my, with my with these guys, and now they're, they're all blocked off. I'll have to do extra work. But we got a, a toasty monolith here that wants to give up one point for Codex Warfare, so come back after that's done. All right, the plan is, I, I totally forgot, there's a whole monolith right here. Uh, a mistakes might have been made. I think I need to not kill That's this one. That's an obelisk, Thomas. They're just they're just things. I don't know. They're, mount, they're, they're Necron things. If I kill this, he's not on the objective, but it's sticky objectives? Oh, no. Not sticky objectives. It probably would have been very cheap. Unless it is. It's not. So that's his bonus. So he won't have any bonus people left. So I think killing that is important. Can four last cans do it? Um, <laughs> it has 28 wounds. Four last cans literally can't do it. <laughs> Uh, that's true. They probably can't do it. <laughs> do I? Do I have any? Oh, I can have Gillen make it shoot. We have we have ways. Let's let's come back and think about how we can do this. <laughs> All right. End of the turn. The monolith. I got the right name. It has died. I killed it with plasma guns. Hey, Codex Warfare. It took all of this to make long charges to kill that one guy, but it was enough for the chaplain to pile up on the objective and get the bonus. Gilliman came in hot, charged the obelisk, did only 16 wounds, so he's still alive with four wounds. Apothecary ran up and healed a Bitrix guard, so two of them slapped those scarabs down to two wounds. That was enough to contest that objective and hold Oath a moment. So. Quickly looking at the score. We haven't been showing the score much. Pretty low on the primary. Got a couple bonuses. He's high on the primary. He's picking up eight again. Can't stop him. Over here, he's got treasures. How does he have so much treasures? Got to look at that. Purge. I'm missing. Oh, this is a purge here, right? Uh, fourth turn, I shouldn't have treasures yet. That scores the end of my fourth turn. We'll fix this score here. He is going to pick up two more banners. Um, I got the one Codex Warfare for the Plasma. The Heavies, uh, that one guy last can't live with one wound. Oh, so bad. Uh, we did get big O's. We didn't march anything. I forgot. I heroically intervened with some troops, thinking I was clever, and I canceled out my March McCrag on my home of base. So I marched McCrag this turn. So I'm running out of time to march McCrag, but uh, he's running out of guys. So we'll see how much he can survive and how much I can score at the end of the game. All right, the last desperate gas. His turn four was pretty quick. He just ran this guy away, trying to keep me from getting points. He's also staying on his objective, so he's getting bonus. Ugh, it's hard for me to get him. I've gone into the attack, uh, the assault doctrine, so I want to kill things to get Codex Warfare with melee, so I can't shoot things too much. So I'm really just going to try to soften this up with the last cannons and the hell blasters, and punch this guy down. So we'll see how that goes. These guys are desperately trying to catch up with Marshall McCrag. Marching. March. All right, guys, let's do this. Oh, it was it was terrible. It was so terrible. He just got me. I did two wounds to him with the chaplain at AP2. He's like, I got four upsays. I made them all. He's only got four wounds I, if he just fails some of them. And then I'm like, all right, well, AP4 is from the Vitrix guard. All the swings. You got four wounds left. Take four saves. Don't make one six. He makes one six. He's alive with one wound. Oh, no. Scarab's still alive. No Codex Warfare again. Last cannons and plasmas. I went all in on the overheats and three guys overheated. Uh, but they did do a lot of damage. So he's down to 10 wounds left on this guy. Soften him up for hopefully in the next turn. 
But now he's going to slap me back. I need to live so I can hold on to that objective. <clears throat> All right, we're going to the fifth round, the final round. He's... Uh Note the absence of the chaplain. Uh, he was overcome by my scarab blitz oh, he, um, and felled. He punched me with the full monolith or uh, whatever he did. Obelith. Obelith. He did shoot me. Yeah, I did exactly eight wounds. I failed. I made a lot of saves, but he survived without the felt carry. He died with just, uh, oh. This is what I got to do. He's got 11 wounds. I'm going to soften him up with last cannons. Hopefully, I don't soften him up too much and kill him. These guys fell back and reengaged so that they can charge. I was going to do Cycle of War to change it back to Devastator and pick off three things with the Devastators, but uh, I have to do that at the beginning of the battle round, and I wasn't thinking, so we missed the opportunity. So we're just going to have to try to punch. So the most we can get is one, two. He's only got two wounds. And three. So these guys got to make a 10-inch. I killed that one, yeah. So I picked up one in the last turn. So I'm gonna, I need a 9-inch with Gilman's plus one here. I spent my reroll. No Tigerius. To help me with spells, um, we got to do all the things. Let's do this assaults. But let's shoot first. Let's shoot. Let's do it. All right. The CP was lost on trying to make things happen. Fall back and reengage. It didn't work. I did not make the nine. The final obelisk, except for this obelisk, stands fast in the face of the charge of these bodyguards. There's no way they'll be able to defeat Without a CP, Gilman didn't want to risk the double charge, so he just charged the Scarab, so he picked them up. So now it's on to the Vitrix, with just Gilman re-rolls, wounding on fives. He's got two wounds. It's going to be AP4. Two wounds. That's an infinite number of wounds. The first one is infinite, and the second one Oh my infinite. goodness. Gilman helped the mans. They're rolling low. They, they dread the power of the Choose. Oh, there's so many ones. What is happening? I need already lost attacks. Fives, we're rolling ones. You're never going to get two of these. No way. Oh, three, and we're rolling ones. Four. Four saves. He's got to hit three sixes here to All stay right. alive. This is, this is fine. I can do this. Easy peasy. Three sixes coming right up. Oh. <laughs> if only their, guns, their swords didn't have AP4. But. It's Does it explode fine, to take all my friends? Take them all apart. Give me that six. There's a strat to do this, but I don't have any CP left. Oh! oh, we'll come back and tally up the score. I don't think I'm going to have enough, but I did pick up one more Codex Warfare. Die, die thing, obelisk. All right, and uh, Necron fans, you're going to see uh, a flawlessly executed strategy. Uh, we started out with a 12-888, holding the, uh, the bonus for the whole round, gave us the treasured 45 on primary. Our miserable opponents went 4-4-8-12 and only got 12, condemning them to the pitiful 40 on primary. Um, he only marched for McCrag towards the end of the game, got eight points there. Oats a moment, of course, got 15, the gimme of Space Marines, uh, something of a welfare uh, strat. Um, uh, handed out to Thomas, despite terrible, terrible decisions. <laughs> um, and then Codex Warfare, he got a mighty eight, um, uh, including three by punching my models to death, which I always uh, appreciate. So his uh, secondaries were eight, fifteen, eight. Um, on my side, uh, Treasure of Aeons, I got 15. Talking of, uh, of welfare strategies, um, Treasure is, is almost a gimme for a Necron in a mission like this. It's really hard not to get 15. Purge Vermin is much, much worse, especially um, weakened now as it is. But I was able to get four early on on it while I was locking him in his corner, and that carried me through to 13. Banners were the worst of the thing. My list isn't very good at banners. I could only plant one with my Overlord and one of my Scorpex, um, but they remained undisturbed uh, all game. It gave me a 10. Um, so a final score, 83-71. Solid victory for the Necron Monolith and Obelisk list, um, which I should tell everyone is not so much of a gimmick list as you might think. I took it to uh, Warzone. It went uh, five wins, three losses. Um, they, they, they dropped the points in all our Lords of War, and they're actually quite serious now. Um, but in any case, a ferocious battle, always a pleasure to play Thomas. I'll hand it over to him so he can use his catchphrase, mistakes were something. <laughs> what, what is it again? Mist mistakes are definitely made. Uh, uh, I'm uh, playing Botan too long, just walking around thinking everyone has invulnerable saves. Didn't believe you didn't take Bring It Down. I didn't, I, I didn't miss... I didn't 24 points? I, I mismanaged so many things. Like I said, I did not pick Bring It Down. We were like, wait a minute. Just, that's not the same category. Oh, oh, I didn't do it. I should have marched. I should have just freaking bring it down. So easy. I uh, had a lot of shooting, but like he was able to go first and he was able to pick up some stuff. It was just, I misplaced this giant ruin thinking I was trying to get Oath. 
Yeah, I only got to shoot one Eradicator one time. It, it did lots of work, but after that, it got killed when he bailed over. I forgot he could bail. Like, I knew it before the game. Somehow, I forgot after turn one. Uh, he did. He had to punch out two of them. That was worth a mighty two points on Codex Warfare. It was like, great. <laughs> Actually, you know, one he killed when it was the Devastator Doctrine, so I got nothing for that. That was like, crap. But you can't just leave it alive. So, which I did twice. I left two of them on, on one wound twice. I was like, ugh. I had sunk that charge into that deployment zone with my mom over there on top three and exploded in the middle of all your guys. I think that would give me a shot. Yeah. 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 It was a super fun game. I, uh, I know we don't see all the stuff in between the rounds, but I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, fun to be back on the channel. Ultramarines, I think. I just, I'm so rusty, man. Playing the auras and managing the guys. The apothecary was out of range. The, the, the apothecary was never in the right place at the right time. He was like, I'm just not in range for feeling no pains. No one's getting healed the right way. Like, dang it. But I will get him back next time. Thanks for watching. Hit that like, subscribe. Hit us up in the comments if you want to hear more. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks.